Hello. Welcome to NPTEL NOC course on introductory course on point set topology part two. Today we shall do compactly generated spaces. Further, last time I already told you that it is not easy to find examples of comp uh, spaces which are not compactly generated. So now we will see a lot of examples of compactly generated spaces. They come from wide spectrum, quite unexpectedly. Okay. So let us go through these, uh, these things carefully. Let X be any Hausdorff topological space. We are restricting ourselves to Hausdorff spaces. If we don't, then we get many more, but from practical point of view, they are not much important. So let us restrict ourselves to Hausdorff spaces. Then X is in CG. If X satisfies the following limit point test condition. I am calling it a limit point test condition. You will see why. So I will keep selling, uh, calling it LPT. So what is this condition? Given any subset f of x and a point x inside x, x is a limit point which I denote it by LF. Remember, we have introduced this notation for the set of limit points of f. It's in yes, derived set of f x is a limit point if and only if there exists a compact subset k of x such that x is a limit point of k intersection f. So uh, pay attention, this is there exists a compact subset, not for every compact subset, okay, that will be not in, that will be totally incorrect. Given any subset f and a point x, the point is inside LF. Okay, if there exists some k such that x is inside L of kf, if part is easy, the only if part puts an extra condition here. So that you know if and only if is important. Okay. So if this condition is satisfied, then X is CG. That is the lemma. This lemma therefore gives you a gives you a nice uh, you know sufficient condition, but this is not a criteria. That's what I it does not give you a criteria. This condition itself is not if and only. So here is if x satisfies this. Okay, it's not only if. However, I don't know any example of a CG which does not satisfy this condition. Okay. I am sure that there are there are such examples, otherwise, this will not be floated like this, it would have been stated as a criteria okay so such example may be quite complicated so that is the story so let us go through this example those in this uh, lemma let f be a subset such that f intersection k is closed for every compact subset k of x then we have to show that f is closer in x that is what x equal to kx means right mm -hmm. So to show that f is closed in x, we take a point x inside LF. If I show that this x itself is inside f, then we are through. Why? We know that for f, uh, if f is closed, then LF must be inside f. That is easy. But LF inside f also implies f is closed because what are the closure points of f? closure points of f are either points of f or they are limit points of f. 
therefore limit points of f is contained inside f means f bar is contained inside f therefore f bar is equal to f okay so i start with a point x okay inside lf then i want to show that it is inside f now condition lpt comes into picture x is in lf means there is a compact subset k of x such that x is inside l intersection okay but if if as soon as i take compact subset this f satisfies this condition and f intersection k is closed so x is a limit point of f intersection k but f intersection is closed in k therefore it is closed in x also right we started with a compact subset of a hausdorff space this is why hausdorff is important here so that is a closed subset something is closed in k therefore it's closed in x therefore if x is inside this one in this subset it's closed inside this one x itself will be inside k intersection f but that is f that's contained inside f so what we have show x is inside f and that's all we wanted okay so this condition hausdorffness is important here okay as a corollary we have two classes of compactly generated what are they any first countable space is compactly generated any locally compact space that is what we are being studying it is also compactly generated okay when i say that i have in my back of my mind i have that they are hausdorff also so a is hausdorff space and that will be in cg if these two conditions are satisfied that means hausdorff plus first countable hausdorff plus locally compact okay see completely diverse field right we have also seen something like this happening any metric space and locally compact space quite different things both of them are bare spaces now here is another example where in first countability of metric spaces and local compactness they are coming together in a different way right so this is just for your observation and see uh, uh, every metric space is first countable now you don't have metric space just first countability so that and local compactness completely different things but both of locally along with hausdorffness they will give you compactly generated why so i am putting it as a corollary all that you have to do is you have to see that both of them satisfy lpt and then apply this lemma okay so how do you see that they are satisfying lpt as soon as you have hausdorff first countable set a point is a limit point if and only if you have a sequence converging to that point along with that sequence take that point also Suppose x n converges to x, then take the set x n union x. That is always a compact set. So x will be a limit point of that compact set. So that is uh, that means that x satisfies uh, what L P T. Now for local compactness, it is even more further easier because. take a point x belong to limit point of some set there will be a neighbor rule around that point which is compact you don't have to go outside that neighbor rule at all to see whether it is a limit point you can restrict yourself to that compact set already so local compactness immediately gives you that lpt very easy okay
okay the first countability also gives you because of this you know a sequence converging to a point union with the limit point is always a compact not all subspaces of compactly generated spaces are compactly generated by this i mean that compactly generatedness is not hereditary okay to see such an example we have to wait a little bit it is not coming so easily right now on the positive side we have the following take x belong to cg every closed subspace is compactly generated that is it is weakly hereditary okay in one sense only not closely weakly hereditary not open okay x beyond cg every closed subspace is compactly the proof is not very difficult a be a closed subset of s b be a subset of a such that b meets each compact set l of a inside a closed subset of l we want to show that b is actually closed in x from which it follows that b is closed in a see x is compactly generated a is a closed subspace i want to show that a is compactly generated so what should i do start with the set b which has its property b uh, such that b meets each compact subset l of a inside a in a closed subset of l from this i have to show that this b is closed in a but i will actually show that b is closed in x okay so let k be a compact subset of x since a is closed we start with a is closed subset l which is equal to k intersection a is compact subset of a right a is closed so k intersection a will be a closed subset of the whole space all all of them so it is it is a closed subset of a compact subset so it will be a compact subset of a also therefore k intersection b which is k intersection a intersection b okay because b is already a subspace of a right is a closed in a k intersection a and hence closed inside k so this is true for all k it follows that b is closed in x so is k intersection a is l l intersection b is closed is the is the property with which i start with b meets every compact subset l of a in a closed subset so okay this a k intersection a put l l intersection b is closed in l okay so this whole thing is k intersection b is closed in k intersection a therefore it's closed inside k itself because a intersection e, k is closed inside k so this is true for all k it follows that b is closed in x because x is in cg that's all we say a subset u of x is a regular subset if for every x inside u there exists an open set v in x such that x belongs to v contained in the closure v closure v contained inside u to begin with though we have used the usual notation for open set there is no no uh, assumption that u should be open okay but however this condition for every x inside u there is an open set v in x so x contained v in contained inside u automatically says that any regular subset u has to be open also if u is a closed open set that is closed and open 
then it is automatically regular <laughs> because we can then take v equal to u for all x right x belongs to u u contained inside u bar because u is clop one and u bar is u so u bar is contained in u so that will be satisfied so so where is the regularity coming in that you have to be very careful here note that being a regular subset neither implies nor implied by the condition that if you take the subspace topology on this subset that subset u is a regular space so these two notions are quite different for you can take u to be any singleton set okay in a which is not an open set okay there are plenty of such spaces then u as a singleton is already a regular space but not a regular subset because it is not open inside x similarly you can start with any non regular space u even if you can uh, allow it to be hausdorff also you have seen such examples and then take x to be disjoint union of two copies of u then this u will be open in x as well as closed therefore it will be regular but as a subspace it will not be regular because we started with a non regular space so that these two examples should convince you that this is just a ad hoc definition this is going towards what to ensure that subspace of a compactly generated space is again compactly generated so this is the theorem let u be a regular subset of a space x then x is in cg implies u is in cg okay let b be a subset of u such that b meets each compact subset of u in a closed subset in order to show that b is closed in u let x belong to the closure of b okay the closure point of b inside u we want to show that x is inside b okay so let v be an open subset of x such that x belongs to v contained inside v bar contained inside u this is by regularity of the regular subset u but if this is the case once we have an open subset of the whole space x will be inside the closure of v intersection b itself okay any closure point we need to say b for this open subset or it must be a closure point that means it is contained inside the closure of b bar intersection b so this is a large set this form therefore it suffices to show that b bar intersection b is closed in u so that x will be inside b bar intersection b but v bar intersection b is contained inside b our aim is to show that x is inside b therefore we have come here namely show that v bar intersection b is closed okay inside u everything is inside u so take a compact subset of x okay then k intersection v bar is a compact subset of u compact subset it is and it is contained inside u therefore it is compact subset of u okay and hence k intersection v bar intersection b is a closed subset of k intersection v bar okay k intersection v bar is compact subset right so k intersection v bar intersection b will be a closed subset of k intersection v bar this is the hypothesis we have been starting with right so b has that property okay 
your clothing clear intersection in the bar, which is closed inside X itself. So this is a closed subset of X1. But X is CG. So we have verified that for arbitrary K, K intersection V bar, okay, uh, K intersection V bar intersection B is, is closed for every K. Therefore, V bar intersection B is closed in X. So once this closure of the its closure inside U will be itself whole thing. Therefore, X will be inside. Before ending up today's lecture, let me give you one very important application of this one in complex analysis. Why I say complex analysis? I don't know personally any application of this in other analysis. But that doesn't mean that uh, it is not applicable. So as far as complex analysis is concerned, I have used it and I know. And I have taken this theorem from a very famous book by Raghav Narasimhan's complex analysis, one variable. Okay, so what does it say? It's a, it's a peculiar statement here. That this kind of study we will do in later on in the course in a different context altogether. Right now, take a locally compact Hausdorff space and a connected component of X, which is compact. Okay. Given any open set U in X containing K, there exists a set N such that K is inside N contained inside U and N is both open and closed in X. Think of this uh, K as a single point. Okay. Single point could be a component also, right? And single point is automatically compact. What does it mean? This means that for every open subset of that point, or every neighborhood of that point, we have another open set which is both open and closed. Open and closed. It is not uh, open and its closure is closed. <laughs> That's not that kind of regularity is stronger than that. N is both open and closed inside X. So, this is happening to every compact component, compact component of X, of, of X. Okay. So, I suspect that this will be useful in, in all these complex dynamics also, not just complex analysis of one variable, wherein you have to study Yulia sets and uh, uh, such things. Okay, let us see the proof. Proof is not all that easy at all. Indeed, I, as a practice, uh, when I read a thing like this, I try to prove it myself. Okay, this one, I could not prove it myself. So first case is when X is compact. So we are going step by step here. Assume X itself is compact. That doesn't mean that, you know, uh, it is connected. You have to take a component that will be compact, fine. So connected component or compact, for each compact component, something is happening. That is, that is what we want to show. Okay, let F be the family of all N contained inside X such that K is contained inside N and N is both open and closed. We don't know whether this F is non-empty one. We have just take F equal to this one. Okay, fine. Look at L which is intersection of all members of N, all members of this family. 
Okay. She says each member is a closed set, intersection is closed. Therefore, L is closed. Clearly, all of them contain K. Therefore, this K, this L will contain K. Okay. L will contain K. What are all N contains such a K is contained inside N and N is both open and closed inside X. So there is no condition on N to be connected. K is a component. Okay. First, we shall prove the claim for L in the place of K. So we are trying to prove something for K. But we have taken a slightly larger thing, maybe very large, I don't know, but it contains K, so we shall prove it for this L. Okay, L itself is not assumed to be connected or anything. We don't know that. But what we will show is that given any open subset of L, there exists a closed and open subset like N containing L. Inside, inside that open subset. So let U be an open subset of X containing L. Then look at X minus U. Okay, that is contained in X minus L, which is the union of all X minus N. De Morgan law. Because L is the intersection of all Ns. Okay, now X minus U is compact. U is open, X is compact. So that is why this first case X is compact we are discussing. X minus U is compact. It follows that you have finitely many N1, N2, NK such that X minus U is contained inside the complement of X minus NI, I ring contain finitely many of them. Okay. Now take N to be intersection of NI, finite intersection finite intersection of open sets is open. Finite intersection of closed sets is anyway closed. So this contains L clearly, right? Because L is intersection of all of them. I have taken only a finite family here. Contained inside you because they are all, you know, this is even smaller than X minus U itself is union of X minus N I. And it's both open and closed. So, so we have already proved this for L. Okay. Now, in order to prove the property for K, we should actually prove that K is L. <laughs> okay. So intersection of all such neighborhoods is actually K is what we shall prove. This will follow if we show that L itself is connected. Anything larger than a connected component has to coincide with it. Right? K is a component of X. So if we show that L is connected, Okay, K must be equal to L. All right. If possible, let L be disjoint union of closed and you know, two closed subsets, non-empty closed subsets. Then we will get a contradiction. K is connected and contained inside the union. Therefore, it must be contained in one of them. Only one of them. So K is contained inside A, let us say. So we shall actually prove that B is empty. That is the meaning of saying that there is no such separation, which just means that L is connected. So we have assumed that A is A disjoint union B is L. We want to show that B is empty under the assumption that K is inside A. All right. Now, use X is Hausdorff. Okay. 
since A and B are disjoint compact subsets. There exists disjoint open subsets Q and V in X such that A is inside U and B is inside V. Remember this theorem? In a Hausdorff space, you can have two compact subsets. They can be separated by open subsets. Two disjoint compact subsets can be separated by. So this is what we have proved. Right? For first we put point and a closed subset, then we improve it for two different closed subsets also. With that I am using here. Okay, A and B are disjoint closed subsets of X, therefore they are compact. So again I am using X is compact here. Alright. So find two open subsets larger than A and B, A and B, right? And they are themselves disjoint. But now L is contained inside U union V. There exists N, which is both open and closed in X, and such so that L is contained in N in U intersection V, because this is an open subset. Okay. Right? Clearly, N intersection U is open because n is this is open u is open also n intersection u is n intersection x minus v right hence it is closed also because n is closed and x minus v v is open so x minus v is closed so n intersection minus v is closed n is closed also since k is contained inside a and a is contained inside u Right, we have K is contained inside N intersection U. Therefore, N intersection U, which is both open and closed and contains K, is in a member of F. It is inside F. This means L is contained as N intersection U, which is contained inside U. But L is A union B. Therefore, B must be empty. Okay. Thus, we have shown that K itself is L. And L has satisfies its property. So, K satisfies its property under the assumption that X is compact. So, that completes the case one. Okay. The general case is much simpler now. Okay. X is locally compact and K is compact. Therefore, there exists a compact neighborhood X naught of K in X. Right? Each point has a compact neighborhood. Right? each point of K is a compact neighborhood, you take the union that will be a covering, that will, you can extract a finite covering, that will give you compact neighborhood. Compact neighborhood means what? An open subset, its closure is compact. Even that much you can say. Okay. So there exists a compact neighborhood, X naught, of K inside X. K naught with a connected component of X naught containing K. K is connected, remember that. Okay. Now K is a subset of K X naught. Okay. K is a connected. So K is a neighbor of X naught. So take K naught, a connected component of X naught in containing K. Every connected subset is contained inside a connected component. Then K naught will be connected in X as well. Okay. Uh, in a subspace, something may not be uh, connected. But if it's already connected in a subspace, 
the RJ space will be connected. Okay, so K naught is a connected component. So K naught is sorry, X, uh, K naught will be connected in X as well. Since K is a component of X, this implies K is K naught. So what I am saying is from X to X naught, X naught is a smaller space. Okay. Advantage is now X naught is compact. But is K a component? This is what you have to see, right? So I say that K is a component of component in X in X naught itself. And K is equal to K naught. That's all. Therefore, K is a component of X naught as well. Now, let U be an open subset of X such that K is contained inside U. Since X naught is a neighborhood of K, K, right? There is an open subset V of X such that K is contained inside V contains X naught intersection U. I can actually take this X naught intersection U itself. Right? So by case one now, applied to X naught, because X naught is compact, there exists an N such that K is contained inside N, contained inside V, and N is both open and closed inside X naught. Everything is happening in the X naught. Since X naught is closed in X, you see, X naught is is compact, right? X naught is closed in X. N is closed in X because N is closed in X naught. Since N is open in X naught, N is also open in V, which is open in X. See, you cannot go via X naught. You cannot make it open, but via V you can see that this N must be open inside X. Therefore, we have got already N is contained inside you. The proof of the theorem is complete because we have found that both open and closed subset of X, which is contained inside you and containing K, of course. All right. Later on, when we are studying one point compactification, I will give you some relevance of this one there. Okay. For compactifications of Rn. In complex analysis, R equal to 2, you have the complex plane. Compactification of that is nothing but the extended complex plane and that is how it is important in complex analysis thank you